Hello, my name is Jenica Smith, and I'm a full-time faculty member in the Department of English at Southwestern Illinois College. We all want our students to engage in complexly nuanced conversations about the things they're learning in our classes, but the problem is that rarely happens in the face-to-face -face class, much less online. Often what we see instead are students doing exactly what we've asked of them, posting reply to our prompt and then responding to exactly two, three, or X number of students we have designated. And that's where the conversations end. But why is that? Hop on any social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, and you'll see your students engaging in all kinds of online conversations, some of them as deeply complex and nuanced as any we can dream of in a college classroom. Well, a big part of the problem is the way we design discussions and interactions online. In the classroom, we can break students into groups, give them time in class to talk to one another, and then come back together for a larger discussion. That's a little more tricky online when students have different schedules and are popping in and out of Blackboard at all hours of the day and night. Harder still when we have some students who don't even sign into the class until midway through the week. So what are we supposed to do? Make things due earlier in the week? You could do that but a better option would be to design more engaging discussions. As a teacher, we've all seen these discussion posts. Some of us may have even posted something like this ourselves. In your post, please respond to the five essay questions below. Your response should be in complete sentences and show the depth of your knowledge. Once you have posted your response, respond to at least three other students. This is what most of us are used to when it comes to discussions online. And it's what our students are used to as well. The problem is, this isn't really a discussion. This is a mini essay with an unstructured peer review attached. The students answer the questions, but they rarely add more than answering those questions. And when they respond to other students, even if you give them guidance, the response isn't natural. What are they even supposed to say? Hey, I got the same answer as you on number three. Great, that means I wasn't completely off base. This isn't really engagement, but most of us have never learned a different way to discuss online. Well, that's all about to change. I'm going to give you five ways to change up your discussion strategy online and give you a couple of rubric ideas to help you grade them. So I'm a huge fan of Jennifer Gonzalez, who runs a website called Cult of Pedagogy. Her website is designed to make you more awesome in the classroom, and it shows. I've used her website to design all kinds of innovative activities in my own classes, both online and face-to-face. -face. Some of the strategies I'm going to share with you are online adaptations of discussions she promotes in the classroom. So here we go. Here's how the gallery walk works. You set up different stations around the classroom, on the walls or on the tables. Small groups of students travel from station to station together, performing some kind of task or responding to a prompt either of which will result in a conversation. She has a couple of suggestions for mixing this up on the Cult of Pedagogy website, but we're gonna stick to the basics. And Blackboard set up a new forum with several discussion threads. These will become your chat stations. Do not let the students create their own threads. Instead, give them a prompt to work through, similar to what you would do in the classroom. Your prompt should ask an open-ended question and encourage students to pose their own questions for other students to respond to. I like to provide my students with a model response just to get them going. Then you can assign students to a set of stations or ask them to respond to each station. If you're worried about students only responding to your prompt, then try this technique I learned from my fabulous colleague, Winnie Kenny. Only the first student to post responds to your prompt. They must then ask a question, which the next student to post responds to, and then ask their own question, and so on. I found this works wonders to keep students engaged in the conversation, and I've seen students respond to more than one peer on their own without having to make it a requirement. With philosophical chairs, you give students a statement that has two possible responses, agree or disagree. Depending on whether they agree or disagree with this statement, students move to one side of the room or the other. From that spot, students take turns defending their positions. Often this activity is based around a text or group of texts students have to read ahead of time and the students have to cite textual evidence to support their claims. 
To modify this activity, create a discussion forum with two opposing viewpoints. Ask students to post their response in the viewpoint they most agree with and explain why they agree with the viewpoint citing the reading or learning materials as evidence to support their claim. Give them maybe a week or a half a week to make their initial post. Make a third thread in the same forum and have students take turns posting their positions. One student assumes the role of a book character, significant figure in history, or a concept, such as a tornado, an animal, or the Titanic. Sitting in front of the rest of the class, the student responds to classmates' questions while staying in character in that role. To move this activity online, you need to create a schedule with discussion leaders. Let the students sign up for the week they want to play the hot seat role in Blackboard. Then each week that student basically leads the discussion playing the role assigned that week. You can require the other students to post one question, be sure to give them guidance on what makes a good question, and the hot seat student answers the questions for the week. I would probably put something in the activity that says they need to answer at least one question a day in order to keep the conversation going and to prevent someone from waiting until the due date to answer all the questions. With ongoing conversations, you encourage students to talk with each other. First, you give each student a conversation tracker, a chart where they keep track of the conversations they've had with other students in the class. Next, students are to have conversations with a minimum number of other students, say about 75% over a predetermined period of time, probably about two to three weeks. These conversations can be structured based on topic prompts supplied by the teacher. On their tracker, students record the name of the person they talk to, the date of their conversation, and a one-line summary of what they talked about. Once a pair of students has had a conversation, they may not return to each other until after they have reached the minimum number of unique conversations set by the teacher. Here's an image of what the conversation tracker posted on the Cult of Pedagogy looks like. I do something similar to this with my getting to know you discussion the first week of class. I have students create a discussion thread with their name on it and provide a few details about themselves. I then instruct them to find at least three other students with similar interests, major, or favorite book because I teach an English class. Over the course of the week, students get to know their classmates because they have to read their posts to see if they have things in common. To modify this for a lesson activity, I would create a discussion forum and post a general topic starter for the week. Something like, why is knowing your audience important? I would then have each student create their own thread responding to the topic question. Then I tell the students to find a partner among the threads, someone they have not partnered with before, and discuss each other's responses. I might also require that if you respond to another person's thread, that same person can't respond to your thread. They have to start a conversation with a different person in class. This way, everyone is talking in at least two threads at any given time. So how do you grade all of this? Well, it really depends on which strategy you go with, but I find using a single point rubric is the best way for me to grade discussions for engagement. On the Cult of Pedagogy website, there's a great article about holistic, analytical, and single point rubrics. I won't go into all of them because I'm sure you've probably heard of a couple of these during your time teaching. If not, definitely check out the article posted in my original email, or you can just do a Google search for Cult of Pedagogy rubrics. For discussions, I like the single point rubric because I usually align it with one of the objectives we're working through that week. For instance, I'm having students work on their purpose for writing this week in class, using the discussion area to share with their peers and provide feedback. The objective I want to assess is collaborate with peers in developing topic and purpose. On my rubric, I might also add some columns for quality of feedback and clarity of their writing. I provide them with feedback based on where they fall on either side of the standard or if they're just meeting it. So that's it. Those are some tips you can do to change up your discussions for the coming semester. Good luck.